everybody. Okay, so today we're looking at, um, obviously the title is Insight into Implementing BYOD, and what we've been doing at Leicester College is um, a number of things. So um, I think that's, oh, am I going, oh, there we go. So the, the first question that Steve wanted to ask you all was about resources that you have in the classroom. Um, it's a bit of a poll, so if you'd just like to um, have a look at that and then answer, Steve will pick up those responses later. Is that right, Steve? Yes, sure thing. Uh, on the participants box, you should have the little A, B, C, and D. It should be symbol with that. So you just click on that and uh, choose just to let us know uh, what your experiences are. Thanks, Kat. That's great stuff. So looking at uh, the responses then, the majority of you are, I would say, at the beginning of this great journey, which is using your own uh, technology that you might have in your own pocket or, or may have even purchased on your own. Uh, some of you have had the luxury of uh, having organizations devices. And one thing that we're seeing in the RSC is more and more organizations are doing this. So thank you very much. What we're going to do with this uh, presentation is we're going to try and do a little bit of an interview process. So I'll be asking some pertinent questions to Joe, and she'll be uh, uh, answering as honestly as she can do. And uh, also, if you have any questions, either put them into the chat pane or put your hand up, and uh, we'll pass the microphone over to you. So usually with all these things, um, one of the biggest questions is, OK, we want to be, do BYOD. Uh, we want to test it out. We want to get um, teachers and learners uh, all kind of excited about it. How do we do that? So the big question is to you, Joe, where on earth do you find all this money to do all this wonderful stuff? Well, we were lucky enough, Steve, to have some uh, budget left over at the end of the year. This initially happened um, at the end of last year, and it was, what do we buy? And we need to buy it quickly. So we had a bit of spare cash left over, and so the college purchased um, a number of iPads, um, and then that went on into the new year, and um, we were able to buy a few Androids as well, and then now we're sitting in the position where we're at the end of the year again, and again there is a little bit of surplus left over, and so we are now looking at Microsoft Surface RTs, which just for everybody out there so that you know, um, I think on Monday, Microsoft announced that um, for educational um, establishments only, they are prepared to offer the Microsoft Surface RT for £200 or thereabouts. So um, I think that's, oh, a pretty, that's, that's a pretty good deal. It is. I'm starting to sound like a marketer. But yeah, £200 sounds a lot more. It's uh, Personally, the RSC has just gone through a process of identifying a new kit for next year. And with the, when it came to the surfaces, we thought maybe not because of the cost, but £200 sounds a, a lot better anyway. So uh, yes, thanks for that. Um, That's OK. OK. Uh, Joe, can I just say, have you got the Roam button on by any chance? Or is that me? The Roam button. No, I haven't. Ah, that's perfect. Uh. We're with you now. OK, then. So you got this money then, Joe. And um, these are the devices that you got, I, I would assume. Um, yes, I mean we we ha we have one surface in the college at the moment, um, and as I said earlier, the initial sale that we um, the, the initial thing that we purchased was the iPads, and we purchased the Androids later on. So when we came to the beginning of the new year, and it's like, okay, so what do we do with them? Um, it was the iPads that we focused on. So it was the iPads that we took out into the curriculum areas um, to see what people thought of them. Um, so what, what we did was um, we had a bit of a, an explore in the e-learning department just to see what could be done and to see what kind of apps that would be suitable to the curriculum. And then we had some teaching and learning conferences planned for January. So you can already see a number of months has passed by. Um, but we had these conferences in January where we we showed them and showed what we'd learned already to um, the curriculum managers and program managers and 
the advanced practitioners. There was also um, senior leadership uh, members in those audiences as well, because what we wanted to do was really inspire the management of the college to help us carry this forward. Um, I also have a small e-learning uh, group, which is made up of really enthusiastic lecturers from across all the different areas of the college. Um, so that worked really well, and, and actually as each learning conference went on, we got better and better at it, and we got more and more feedback, so that was really good. Um, yes. Joe, just before we go on, uh, there's been a couple of comments. Jackie was asking about uh, Surface uh, devices and what they are and all that, lot, but that's been answered. But one thing that I noted uh, was you were doing the conferences, and it wasn't just you talking about all these new devices. You actually brought in some real experts. Now I'm, I'm thinking of the people from Microsoft. So if you could just give us a little insight into that, please. Well, I mean, that was, that was at um, the conference a year before. Um, we had um, a guy called Lee Stott who was, um, uh, he termed as, a, as an evangelist from Microsoft who came and they actually gave us a sneak preview of, of the Surface at the time and showed us some videos um, and that, that kind of really got us into the, the mobile technology potential, I think. That's great. And of course, this is all to do with the question is, OK, the first step is getting your hands on some technology like that. And sometimes you might have a bit of surplus where you can test things out depending on how much, and maybe one or two devices, maybe more, who knows. But then it is all about amazing the staff and saying, yep, this is the future. This is how the future uh, classroom may look. So it's like that. So yeah, bringing in people into conferences is great. And I know, uh, looking at this slide next, you're going to be talking about kind of videos that you've also found. Um, yes, what, what we did was uh, we found some really interesting sort of videos that looked at work that um, some companies had done, but also um, looking at what we term as the digital native, really, uh, see what was going on in the future, what the expectations were. Um, and what I've got for you is one of the videos that we showed. Now, it's a shortened down version, and it has got some Benny Hill music attached, because that was the only one I could find with the shortened version. So if you don't want to listen to Yakety Yak, can I suggest you actually turn the sound down. But please watch the video, because it, it was really insightful, and it was, it was one of the big things that gave us the wow factor at the conferences. Um, and really inspired people and thought, yes, this is where we're going in the future. Yes, thanks. I'm going to put on this video now in the web tour. You should have a blank screen. This lasts about two minutes, so I'll click on it. It should auto play, uh, and then we'll come back to the slides in uh, just over two minutes' time. So thank you.
Okay, we're back. Uh, Joe, I've just turned off your microphone as we had Benny Hill feedback, which is some you so if you just want to click back on there and okay. uh, what I was going to say yeah what I was going to say is uh, yes first of all what you were doing then is wowing them saying this is a potential future of course it's not the future it's just something that might happen and then I'm, I would guess that the next question that you asked was where are we now what can we do and if you have all these mobile devices it's okay what shall we do with it so I can see a slide which is we looked at the apps yeah, so I mean, um, in front of you, you've got sort of just a little snippet of um, five or six of the apps that we looked at. And, and what I wanted to do when um, prior to presenting these to members of staff was that I wanted to find apps that, that really took what goes on into the classroom and allowed us to create a really educational situation from them. So. Um, the one on the far left with the star is iMovie, and um, for any of you that haven't had a chance to use this, it's fantastic and really good. You, the learners can create short videos and really sort of dramatic trailer actions, but they have a lot of fun doing it. They can also edit video footage, which is, so it, it, it's about sort of recording and editing, but they can um, really take on board assessments so we can video assessment, edit it, they can annotate it. So it made something that could be quite bland, quite creative. The next one is called Explain Everything, and that's a whiteboard app, um, which allows you to create presentations and works very similar to any of the whiteboard um, programs that, that you have in the classroom. Um, then we've got iBrainstorm and Puppet Pals. iBrainstorm obviously is a mind mapping tool Puppet Pals was brilliant because we thought this would be really good for students who were a bit camera shy. They were able to take photographs of themselves and create sort of animated situations with themselves um, and and make recordings. So this was really good. We looked at this for functional skills so that if they were doing um, practice conversations, they could actually take photographs of each other and then animate themselves and do the talking without actually having the video on them all the time. The next app was Simple Mind, and that, that was another brainstorming um, application. We also explored Poplet, which isn't on there, and Poplet is really intuitive and really good, so um, we thoroughly enjoyed that one. And the next one was GarageBand, for all of those people out there that like a bit of music. My boss absolutely went nuts over this and spent a lot of time trying to play the guitar. Um, however, I put it in there because of the um, podcast availability. The recording was really good, and um, it allowed us to um, explore the use of podcasts in education by uploading them to Moodle, and so um, sort of teetering on the edge of the flipped learning. And Comic Life, again, fantastic assessment tool, allows pictorial evidence to be collated and animate and annotated really well. So we got on really well with those. And I think out of all of them, iMovie and Comic Life have come out as the most popular apps from all, from all of those. Yes, thank you, Joe. I've just been uh, looking at the conversation. I, I threw out the question, uh, anyone got a favourite app? And there are some wonderful ones in there. One of my favourite ones is that last one you mentioned, which was Comic Life. Build yourself a comic in, in no time at all. And the amount of evidence you can get, for example, it takes role playing to the next, um, next level. One standard one that I try and demonstrate is health and safety. The normal boring way of doing health and safety is just write a list of uh, kind of risks and hazards that you've found and all that lot. Here, you can just say, here's, here's a mobile device. Now go away. I want you to role play hazardous situations and narrate it and all that lot. And because they're narrating, uh, very quickly in, in kind of comic book style. It's amazing how much higher level information you can get out of that as well. Jackie, I can see, is, uh, yes, I guess you, you, you teach in the sports area. Uh, my background is sports, and uh, Coach's Eye and Dartfish are two of the, the popular ones that I like. Coach's Eye is great, not just for sports, but you can video people, and it allows you to kind of slow mo around. So if you're trying to teach somebody a skill, you can video them doing it. For example, uh, chopping vegetables even, and then you can play it back in slow motion. So you can talk about things like hand position, where the knife is, how they're standing, and all that. Look, 
just so they're getting better feedback because in the end, in the old days, the feedback was the tutor going, you're doing that wrong, you should do it this way. And sometimes that's not the best way to do feedback. Crazy talk, another one, Evernote, there's so, so many. Does anybody want to take the microphone and just kind of expand on what they've mentioned there? I'll, I'll give you a, a few seconds to... I'll take that as a no. It seems like it's only <laughs> me and you today then, Joe. Oh, dear me. So going through this journey then, you've had the money, you've bought a variety of devices just to test them out and see how they're doing, and then you've gone to the staff and the senior managers and you've motivated them to kind of get interested in it, and you've put on sessions where staff can have a play, really, with a lot of these apps. Um, Absolutely. I suppose it seems to be all going so well. What other things did you consider? Well, I mean, at this point, by the time we'd done all the, the conferences, I was getting daily emails from members of staff going, when are we getting the iPads? But we weren't there yet, and there were things, as you said, that we needed to think about and consider. So connectivity was a big issue. Our, our current wireless system was not robust enough, it was flaky and and we knew we needed to get something much better that gave us all round sort of coverage. And so one of the first things we did was completely redo the college's wireless system. And now it's absolutely fantastic. You can actually walk outside with your mobile device and still connect to the college's network, which is brilliant. Um, so we sorted that. Then it was a case of what do we do with them? That was a question that we were being asked quite a lot. Okay there's an iPad, but what do we do? Is it just a toy? What? And so that was where the, the sort of apps came in, but also we started to spread out and just give curriculum areas some of our sample machines so that they could actually have a look and see and, and see what the capabilities um, of them were. And, and I mean, the what to do with them also covers, you know, where, where, they were, where, they, where are we keeping them? What do we do with them? How do we get them about? and um, we'll come to that a bit later as well. But also one of the main things for me sitting as a sort of individual person with all these iPads and Androids was setting one up and putting the apps on one is really easy. Getting it on 200, as I say, is a little bit more tricky. And, and that was that is a problem that, that still keeps rearing its head a little bit. Um, so if, if we go to the next slide, as I said, it was we were going around in circles. We were going, oh, well, just get this or we'll just get that and then something else would crop up and we weren't sure where we were going. So what I want to do is jump down a slide. If you just bear with me one moment, I will keep on that. Ah, yes. Okay, one of the big things um, for me was um, these three questions here. So again, moving forward to things that we wanted to consider, as I said, where they'll be stored and how will they be accessed. Uh, originally, the college bought these really expensive metal cases that held 30 iPads, but you couldn't wheel them about. You couldn't transport them up and down corridors and across the lift. And 30 is, is kind of too many for our class sizes. Um, and people in smaller staff rooms were going, I don't know what to do with this, we can't do it. And it became it became a barrier, so it was something that we needed to overcome. Um, and also that, that sort of fed into how they were going to be accessed as well. So we've sorted that out now. From You'll see from the image, we've, we've agreed on these little portable cases. They take Android and they take iPads. Um, and we're working with the manufacturer at the moment to ensure they can take the surfaces so it can be all three, all in the same case, but it allows us to store 20 tablets, which is our normal class size, in one easy manoeuvrable piece of kit that isn't going to cause anybody any back damage, lifting or anything like that. But after we'd finished all of those, the one big question that was still out there, and this was a really big one and remains a really big one, is how we're going to get the apps on. And it seems like it's going to be simple. With the iPads, initially, they said, OK, you can sync five machines to one device, but then actually that's not legal. 
so um, in America at the time they had a volume purchasing plan which just as we were sort of embracing and having a look at this they brought over to the UK so I was advised to apply for an, an, an Apple volume purchasing plan which involves going onto the Apple site and filling out a form and giving your organisation's VAT number and sending that off and waiting and uh, we got that back and that made me an administrator which allowed me to create um, accounts throughout the college. This was fine except when I explored into it we had to buy 20 apps and in order to get any discount so in some cases some, we, some areas we've only got 15 iPads and five other devices and so it was it was felt that it, that made it very difficult so it, it made, meant it, it needed to be more of a central thing um, to purchase the apps because there was going to be um, licenses remaining if people bought 20 and only placed 15 on devices and there were five left over and that just seemed like a waste of money to discard them when other people may actually want that app so that kind of stopped us there a little bit plus it was still quite a lot of money um, and I'll come back to that in a minute but with the Google I contacted Google in America because I couldn't find anything on the internet about buying things in bulk what do we do and there are apps out there and I contacted Google um, by email and, and they rang me back and they said we have no volume purchasing plan I said what does that mean uh, you know I've got 200 odd devices if I download an app can I put it on all of those devices yes you can can I have that in writing please so they emailed me and I didn't feel they'd covered it in the email so I emailed back to them and said please could you just clarify that if I pay 2 99 for one app I can then put that app on all 200 of my machines at no extra cost and they said yes I thought wow this is fantastic I mean the streets ahead I mean I'm sure at some point they will put a volume purchasing plan in place because the developers won't be getting their money but for now Google do not have anything in place for establishments who want to buy more than one app at a time so I mean that's potentially a really big cost saving and when we were looking at apps the service party really doesn't have any apps at the moment and we only have one currently in the college until we're just waiting for the other the new batch to be delivered um, and so, so that was sort of that was quite an easy one. So, as far as putting devices into the classroom, the students. Yeah, Joe. Yes. Yeah. Joe, just just going back on on what you've been saying, I, I think what you just mentioned about Google is a strong argument towards Google. I guess many of us think, oh, Apple is the future because that's where developers seem to go first. So, if we want the latest apps, then Apple have them. But yeah, if if you only have to buy that app once and you can roll it out uh, throughout the whole institution on Google that is a strong reason why you should go the other way so there are lots and lots of things to think about there um, yeah. another thing I mean I, if I can I want sorry go I'll, I'll just go back to you in a sec Joe uh, <laughs> just going back the other issue here is uh, you mentioned where will they be stored and one thing that we've noticed is for anybody out there that's ever used a mobile classroom is how do you charge these things and to have a process of being able to charge these at the end of the day or whatever has to be thought of as well uh, not only is it how do you plug them all in but is it going to trip the electrics in your organization for example my own personal experience is we had a mobile classroom we stuck it into a socket into the wall and every time we flipped the switch uh, it would short the fuse out because you multiply say if, if it's a, a tablet device that's two amps you've got 20 of those it's asking a lot of electricity to come through the wire which trips a circuit so it's working out solutions for that as well so there are a lot of issues that, that have to be considered so that's it but I'm guessing what you're going to now go on to Joe is talking more about the students this is all about BYOD and uh, using the learner's device and of course having the organization bring in lots of devices is a great kind of halfway house and more importantly it helps staff get used to this new technology so they can get up to speed with the learners so the big question is of course uh, what about students learners and uh, BYOD right well um, 
we had a look at this and what we did was um, the college does a survey towards the end of the year, the learner survey, anybody from colleges, I'm sure we all, we're all in the same thing that we have to do these surveys. And so we, we added some questions to it because we wanted to sort of get to grips with what kind of devices our students were using because some of the feedback from the conferences was that well, you know, not all of our students have got smartphones, they don't have access to, to the sort of devices that you want us to use and, and so we thought we, we need to get this information directly from the students. So we asked the, the students two questions, one was you know, did they have access to a smartphone and the other just to sort of come alongside of it was whether they use social media or not. Um, and I'll show you the answers to this. We actually were were amazed at this and thought this was this was a greater percentage than we'd ever thought of. So what you're looking at now is the percentage of students in each area that have actually got or have access to a smartphone. Um, Buco at the bottom just to explain it, is business and computing and retail. Then we have care. And they're sort of 84 and 85 percent construction 75 percent we kind of took that dip because you wouldn't take an expensive iPhone onto a building site um, continuing studies still quite high at 60 percent uh, cram which is creative arts and media 80 percent engineering 81 percent a very low score for ESOL but again that's that's quite um, acceptable I think in, for, for sort of those areas where um, you know English is a second language. Um, hair and beauty 77%, hospitality and leisure 83%, PASH 80% which is performing arts, science and humanities and skills for life 47%. So Joe that is absolutely great. Um, one thing I was going to say was uh, I think this highlights the importance of getting uh, data from your learners and the habits of your learners because a lot of us will kind of say we need to go BYOD, we have to look at mobile devices and usually managers will go well not everyone's got a mobile device but looking at those figures they, they are quite strong and I would assume that these figures are not going to go down but going to go higher year by year so having this Absolutely. To present to senior managers is fantastic to, to kind of justify your direction and how fast you're going to move in that direction. That's right. Um, the next slide, do you use Facebook? This was about social media and again, I mean, I think this is, this is as we would expect. Again, the lower areas, um, ESOL and skills for life being the mature learners, um, but the rest of the area is still quite high. I mean, 76% I know in computing, I would say that was a lot lower than I thought, but I think that's because there's other, other types of social media now that students access. But again, quite interesting results at a time when we're looking at a college of unblocking Facebook. So this is the smartphones and social media joined together by age group. Again, if you have a look at that, obviously with the ESOL and the Skills for Life sector, the, the sort of slightly older learners and so that's the, the lower numbers as you'd expect and then the 16 to 18s in the 80s and the 19 to 25s late 70s so you know we knew from from getting this information that we were on the right track that we were we were on target and using mobile devices and technology um, encouraging the students to be able to use their own devices and for us in e-learning, putting information that was accessible to them on those smart devices onto Moodle to enhance their learning, we were onto the right, we were on the right track. And so that kind of brings me to the end. Um, I just, if, if I could, Steve, can I just go back to something? Steve. Can I just Hello check? There. Can everybody yes. hear me? Yep. Okay. I, there, there was just something that I felt I just wanted to go back to, um, and I know you you sort of touched on this. Just to go back. Did you? Okay. It was it was it was this slide here, um, and just so that people 
Well, all organisations will go through their own kind of studies and, and investigations as to what's, what's right. Um, and we said, and, and as you reiterated, Steve, that um, Google Play having no volume purchase and license made it a very attractive deal. However, um, when we have further discussions on what to purchase at the end of the year, the decision that, that came from us from the college guided by the e-learning team was that actually in the classrooms the iPads were the better creative learning tool um, and that for mobile technology across the college that we would go for surfaces um, and the Androids we wouldn't pick up for now so I just wanted to sort of finish that sentence so to speak Joe. Yes, uh, that, that is really in, uh, interesting. Uh, my own experiences when talking to other people in organisations is they, they balance up what device to go and it still seems to be that the Apple devices are the one with the status. But uh, of course, what we need to do is go through the process of justifying why this is a better device. So mm. yes, my own experiences are uh, um, they have better apps on them and usually developers will develop them on the Apple first because there's a larger market and then move it on to Android. For example, uh, these uh, online sessions use Blackboard Collaborate and the app for Blackboard Collaborate has been on Apple for, well, it's been over a year and uh, the app for the Android only came out about one or two months ago so th there is a, si a little bit of a delay. Other things are somebody mentioned explain everything and uh, apps where you can kind of narrate uh, an interactive whiteboard and create your own movies about it. That's great. Up to now, we haven't really found one for Android yet, so it, it's always an issue. But uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes left, so uh, this is now uh, your chance to ask any questions to, to Joe. Joe, thank you very much for your, your presentation there and the interview. Uh, what we tried to do at the very outset was tr try and keep it as open and as honest as possible. It's not we are Leicester College and everything's brilliant. This was the warts and all step by step we did this and then we came up with that issue so we did this that, and the other so hopefully you've uh, got something out of it but does anybody have any further questions either in the text pane or through your microphone If I can just say, it has been, I mean, if, if we look at it from start to finish, it's been over one academic year trying to get this up and running. Um, but I think the time taken has been very worthwhile because the decisions that we would have made four or five months ago aren't, aren't, isn't, or isn't the final decision that we actually ended up making. So I'm really pleased we took our time on that. Okay, uh, just going through the text chat, uh, from the top uh, we've got Ginny has asked uh, BYOD is one thing, but what expectations are there concerning purchasing of apps? Do you have a comment here? Um, the, the expectation for the purchasing of apps, obviously I mean this is, this is when um, it kind of helps to have the volume purchasing plan with Apple. These learners come in and, and majoritively if that is actually a word, they do have Apple devices. Their own devices are iPads. And so what you would do is get them to log in through your the college's particular Apple ID and that would allow them to sync and download the apps that were relevant to them for that lesson. Sure thing. Added to that, uh, uh, one thing that I would recommend, we were talking about this a couple of weeks back with an organization, was it it would help if you're using BYOD for assessment to not specify or over-prescribe how you're going to do this assessment. For example, if it was health and safety, you don't say use Comic Life to create a comic book or anything like that. You just say create a comic book and then you can talk to them in individually about using either different apps or different formats as well. So you, you've got to think on, on those lines. Um, Absolutely. I mean, what we're going to do, Steve, on Moodle is, is create a glossary of all the different apps that are available and what they're capable of doing. So let, we're hoping that lecturers will sort of point learners in the direction of that and say, OK, you need to do this assessment. Please feel free to use any of these apps that are available to you to, to sort of have a go. 
Thing. Thank you. There are a couple of questions on, uh, I suppose, safety. It's how there's Paul, there's Chloe, and they're asking questions about uh, how have you got on with you uh, using learners' own devices. I guess that is net, uh, attaching it to the network and infrastructure, protecting um, the, the college's network as well from viruses and so on. And uh, also, it's kind of half been answered as well, which is. What about that 20% that you talked about that don't have smartphones? Well, again, this this was this was something that came up at the conferences. Not all of our learners, it was, and it was placed in front of us as a potential barrier. And and we decided to take the approach that that there were no barriers to this moving forward. That there was enough students in the classroom that actually own devices. So if we were going to use devices for actual assessment and learning, then group projects, students would share devices, and also the college provides some of its own. So the, there was no need for any learner to feel that they were lacking in a resource that other students had access to. Um, as far as the network is concerned, we have a special student BYOD login. Um, which is obviously restricted to certain things and, and they don't directly attach via a wire to our main network. So we have a special student network set up wirelessly for them. Yes, there is. this is due ground, so there's no kind of specific advice. Uh, for example, Joe, you're talking about kind of uh, learners logging in, and a, a number of organizations have done that. I noticed Chloe yeah. Harley from New College Stanford has a, a slightly different uh, method where uh, learners can use their mobile devices to log onto the system, which is they don't need any logins at all. They just connect to the appropriate uh, Wi-Fi, and they're straight in, and they can get onto the internet. Of course, they can't go into it any of the, the college's servers and, and access their own personal drives and, and so on. But uh, it's interesting. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes on and what the argument is to have that method of doing it. Yes, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's six of one and a half dozen of another, isn't it? I mean, it just depends what suits the organization best. I suppose we felt by having a, a sort of area that the students still logged into with their username and password, it meant they still had access to printing and their own individual areas, um, which gave us sort of more flexibility when storing documents as well. Um, one of the big things with apps was with Apple was you know where do we store the students' work, and obviously that brings on a whole new cloud technology. Thing. Yes. Yes. A nice comment from Paul on here. Uh, Paul from Loughborough. He uses mobiles to, with learners to record their progress and practice work, practical work. One thing uh, that I've found is uh, the whole part of assessment to do with reflection is often fudged, I suppose, in the past, which is we're supposed to teach learners how to reflect effectively so they can then develop themselves. But in the end, a lot of assignments reflection happens the night before the assignment is handed in and not when the activity is done. And I think the use of mobile devices is a nice little bridge that kind of pushes that point where you record your reflection closer to the activity. Uh, one example I've got personally is in my past, I, I had the, the joy of teaching down at Silverstone Racecourse where we just gave, gave the students a car and they had to race around the track a few times. And then part of the assignment was actually reflecting on their performance and what they needed to do to improve their performance over time. So it was great to just kind of, uh, the activity was, your uh, doing a radio interview and just say how your performance was and straight away they're full of adrenaline and the reflections were kind of lifted and to the point they knew exactly what they did on each turn whereas before that it was very much uh, maybe two or three weeks afterwards they go right what did I do on that day and they guess it so you know it wasn't so it helps with reflection. I mean the, the other side of this Steve to consider is, I mean, obviously, if we're looking at smart devices, the the use of verbal um, verbal feedback on assignments, it means that students can actually sort of receive the, that verbal feedback on their smart devices, download that, and listen to that um, repeatedly. So, I mean, I, I often wonder whether bring your own device ought to be use your own device more than anything. There are lots and lots of different acronyms coming out, but. 
I suppose it's the whole concept now is what we're seeing a lot of organizations do is they're spending less on physical desktops within there and more on the network to improve and encourage the use of mobile devices. So which, whichever flavor uh, is used, either being the organization bringing in lots of devices or expecting learners to do it, you can see where the shift is. I think that's it, Steve. I don't think uh, if it anybody's is, yes. got any more questions. Okay, well, thank you very much from me. Anyway, um, hopefully you've had a, a nice little insight into implementing Bring Your Own Devices uh, with a teaching and learning perspective. Um, if I just show you what other resources are available, um, this week, for the past three days, we've been doing online sessions, basically to kind of do kind of information heavy stuff. Uh, what we're doing next week is we're going to have two mirrored sessions, one in Leicester on the 25th and one in Nottingham on the 26th. These are more hands-on, so uh, you can go to our, our website link there and you can book yourself in on there and hopefully you'll be able to do that. The hands-on workshop links to this one um, is to do with using mobile devices and uh, helping with flipped learning in the classroom. So it's what technology can you use in the classroom to enhance the teaching and learning perspective. The resources from this will soon be available on our Moodle website, so you'll be getting a link to that pretty much soon, and uh, you'll be able to catch up all the resources from all the presentations over the past three days. If you need any help, there is a GIST Regional Support Centre in your area. Of course, the majority of you are within the East Midlands, but some of you are not. So there is one. You can get all this information off this website here, the giscrsc.ac.uk. We are here to support you and make sure that what uh, uh, happens with your learners is enhanced and is a little bit better. If you need to contact the East Midlands, then they are our contact details. So once again, I would like to Thank very much, Joe Batson, for a great insight into what's been happening at uh, Leicester College. And thank you all for participating in this. Some great comments in there. I'm going to be copying this chat and doing a lot of follow-ups with, with all this. So with enough said, it's a Friday afternoon. It's quarter to three. And because I'm recorded, I will not finish that sentence. So I, thank you very much to all. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>